What is Zane's world? It's the world that I live in. It's everything I have going on in my life. I'm on tour doing stand-up about 120, 130 days of the year. That means I'm on the road for most of the year. I'm gonna make a video every week. That's what Zane's world is. Sometimes I'll be somewhere that I don't live. It'll be intrinsically interesting. The other times I will be home. I get asked way too many times, like, what do you do? What are you doing? My wife, Mel, is obviously a huge part of my life. She doesn't like to be on camera which is something to keep in mind, whether she's on camera or off camera, just knowing that she doesn't want to be on camera just makes me want to put her on camera that much more. What are you guys doing? Who's this? It's Grant. This is Grant. And who's that, Georgie? Georgie. Hi, Georgie. And President McKinley. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what that chair's made. Oh, sure. I know that you had asked me if I would go with you tomorrow when you have to get all the kittens fixed. Mm. But I can't because I have to go and do a podcast tomorrow. Today we're shooting the Crafts and Crafts podcast, which is where I sit down with celebrities to drink craft beer and do arts and crafts. Today our guest is uh, Luke Knoll, uh, who was on Saturday Night Live. I did a podcast with him, my lightly toasted podcast that I was doing by my fire pit uh, last year. And that's a great interview and you can learn a lot about Luke. He was on a, a season of Saturday Night Live. We kind of break the whole thing down. And Shane Hartline, uh, a friend of mine, we met on a, the set of a movie. He's a, a former professional wrestler. He was on the show Station 19, which was a Grey's Anatomy spinoff. He was on that last year. He is our second guest today. He's also the guy who's producing the podcast and editing the podcast. So even if you are a working actor, you could still have multiple months off. Most people, most working actors or working performers, they do have something else that they do, whether it's a you know, an apparel brand, they consult or they edit or they produce or they direct. Those are things that you can do to make a paycheck. That's what most people, myself included, have to do. You, you can't just do what you wanna do. Like for me, obviously I can't just do television because television in the world that I knew it is gone. So that's why I have to, but also get to, to do my tour do my podcast, do these Zane's World episodes. It's a new world. It's a new world that we live in and, and a show like Three Sheets. I mean, the network that Three Sheets was on went off the air. The ne next, that was Mojo. The next network it was on, which was Fine Living, went off the air. The next uh, network that it was on was Travel Channel, went off the air. For, for the purposes of what it was, Travel Channel does not exist. It's no longer a channel about travel, and I don't even know why they kept the name. And then Drinking Made Easy was on a channel called HDNet, which changed its name to Access, which also doesn't exist in the form that it used to exist in. Lucky for me, I'm doing the stand-up tour and I am traveling, so I find myself in a lot of interesting situations. And because I'm doing the podcast with celebrities and I'm traveling and I live, quite frankly, someplace where there's always something happening. working my way back and yes Shane I acknowledged that AA, yes I'm listening to the 80s hits and I can't I use know. this we can't use this audio <laughs> blah 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 we are yeah yeah too bright we're here at Lawless Brewing in North Hollywood this is where we, we shoot the podcast the crafts and crafts in fact this is where we will be shooting the podcast because I started shooting this right before the pandemic then stopped basically I was on tour for so long that now we're shooting it from here. We're setting up, we got the, the lights, we got the cameras, we have the sound, everything is set up. This is where you go. Where's the tripods? Where's the tripods? Zane, we can't, hold on. It's take two. <laughs> hey, <laughs> dramatic reenactment. This is a dramatic reenactment. This is a reenactment of something that just happened. <laughs> dramatic reenactment, I'm gonna add black and white, I'm gonna add dramatic music. Okay, go ahead. Zane! What's up, man? Where are the tripods, Zane? 
Cut. Zane, I'm gonna need you to add a little more, I know you're not an actor, it's okay. Your motivation here is Mel was taken. That, and she's the, oh, she's the tripod? Is, just imagine is this what like, you would feel in your heart if Mel was taken. Is this Stanislavski? Now, would you be the sad if Mel, Mel was taken? That's the is first. Is the value of Ma Mel equal to the value of a tripod? Should, in this case, yes. Should we be doing this or should I just go home right now? You should go get the okay. tripod. Okay. <laughs> have a strike today because I forgot the tripods at home. And Shane kind of got a strike because Luke didn't get my, the- your email you gave mm. me. Okay. <laughs> because Luke, see how I was gonna phrase it, because, because Luke didn't get your email. And then yeah. therefore Luke didn't come, so now I have to interview you. And it's just, it just seems like it's by design that Shane's gonna always make things cancel and then he'll always sub in. It's like, It'll probably be like six weeks before we have another guest besides There may you. be some truth to that, but here's the actual truth. <laughs> Zane runs his websites on GeoCities <laughs> and Angel Fire. Bing, and, bing. And every one of my emails that I sent out have gone to spam. Yeah, no. because it's the words that you use in your email. You can't email <laughs> You can't email Luke to be on the podcast and be like, sale, sale, I'm sale. I'm a Persian prince and I want to make you rich. Yes, not that we have anything wrong with Persian princes. No, not at all. My only kind of prince. My only kind of prince. Zane, you want some peanut butter pretzels? Yeah. Mm. Why did you have to touch him? <laughs> Don't want us on the floor? <laughs> yeah, I like that he did it. <laughs> right now, sitting here on my computer, and we have about 65 of the 100 tour dates locked down, um, and we need to lock them down by the time you're seeing this. So by the time you're seeing this, the tour, tour tickets are on sale. And then the promotion of the tour starts. So in order to lock down a stand-up show at 100 breweries, I've had to reach out to um, about 2,000 breweries. Then once I get the conversation going, I pass it along to Trent, our tour manager, who gives them the, the contracts and the logistics and the audio and the lighting and all that kind of stuff. And then at that point, the tickets go into Eventbrite and the tickets are able to be sold. So right now the tickets are on sale, but maybe at this point you have a little bit more insight as to what went on behind the scenes to book all these stand-up comedy shows at breweries. This is the first time a stand-up tour has ever happened at breweries, ever, on the planet. And this is our third or fourth year doing it. I have no idea. I'm re, well, we, I'm, whatever, rebuilding this catio up on the deck so that the cats can come out. Because one time, we didn't know that we needed screening and Scooter jumped through there and slid down the roof. It was horrible. So we have built this um, catio. We just redid all of the, the railings here and put in extra waterproofing. And so now we're putting the whole thing back together. This is what this week looks like. So these two screens are up and then these two screens need to go up and then I've built a door that goes there so it closes it off and then you can still access the other side. Super fun. I told Mel that I would go with her to uh, the UPS store on one condition but then I never told her what the condition was and the condition was that she pulled me home in the wagon that we used to bring um, the packages to the UPS store. <laughs> Move it lady! Don't! Don't! I'll throw your phone! It's not, it's waterproof. It's your phone. Oh, it looks like you're pooping. Now the pool is clean. This is so exciting. I hope you guys are enjoying my content. <laughs> if you are, please subscribe for more. This is what happens when I'm home, when I'm home, you know, I'm, I'm on the road for so long that stuff builds up, especially when there's the rain that we've had in LA. So I'm doing construction inside. Oh, this is nice. And I have to take care of this pool, wrap everything up along with getting ready for my next tour and all kinds of other stuff. I've been here for one, half of one of the like 11, or 15 atmospheric rivers that we've had. Atmospheric is their term, not mine. Like really torrential rain. And so I've been out of town because of the tour. I've been out of town for all of them. And so Mel had to deal with all of the flooding herself. And, um, you know, I came home and I don't know. This is, this is how it's been 
for like a month. <laughs> I've been relegated to what was the library, which is not horrible. I actually don't mind it, but my desk has been moved to here. And so um, it just means a little bit less room for all of the uh, creatures that live here. I'm sure I will touch on this a lot more in the future, but my wife and I, and I'm mostly my wife, started a nonprofit um, special needs pet rescue called Pumpkin Patch Pet Rescue. So uh, we've helped out hundreds of cats and dogs, mostly cats, um, in the last oh, five or six years since we've been doing it. If you love animals and you're not yet following my wife on social media, you should go and check it out. She's uh, at Mel Lamprey on Instagram. She documents the, <laughs> hey, buddy, uh, the, the different animals that we have here, the surgeries and, and um, procedures that some of them require, the medications some of them require. So it's interesting. She busts her butt and all you really see of it is what she's doing uh, on her Instagram. You don't see what she's doing every day, running around, rescuing, picking up animals, dropping them off, um, all the medications. I think right now I saw the list downstairs. There's about 30 medications that are required. Uh, that's a little butthole shot. <laughs> that is about 30 medications that are required for the animals in our house right now, including Georgie. Georgie's like, no, all attention on me. All attention on me. Can you diagnose yeah. This is terminal <laughs> cuteness. This, uh oh, <laughs> jelly. I, I think I hear Dr. Mike. I think what? I hear him. What? I think I hear him. I came in and there's a guy. <gasps> Hi. This makes no sense. You're laying on bars, I know. but there's a bed underneath it, and that's all he cares about. When I'm home, there's always a puzzle going, and we try to trap whoever visits the house into helping us with the puzzle, especially when it's a difficult puzzle like it is here. And so we've trapped uh, Dr. Mike. So other than just providing <clears throat> me with content for Zane's World, what's Dr. Mike doing here today? I'm gonna vaccinate some animals. You're gonna vaccinate animals? Yeah, a special way. Yep. A special way. Mm -hmm. So this gets dripped into the nose rather than an injection. That's not to say that they like it anymore. Actually, that wasn't too bad. Well, that, that was bad. surprisingly good. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah, good for you. <laughs> wow, that was surprisingly... Good job, Pumpkin. Well, but it's pumpkin. Pumpkin's, you know. pumpkin's easy. Yeah. So instead of a shot, mm -hmm. this was a... What do you... Nasal? What do you call it? Intranasal. Intranasal uh, vaccine yeah. for the kittens. Thank you. Where are you? You forgive me? No. no not quite yet. No. What the a f <laughs> And how do you feel now? I feel a little better. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you will. Yeah. yeah. But I'm starting to get hungry. We should probably eat. Okay, I'm going to eat now. Thanks. I'm going to head down to Brewery X in Anaheim right now as a potential location for the Ski Patrol stand-up special. I've not been in the brewery, so I'm going to get down there right now. I had some conversations with them. They're interested in talking about it more. I said, rather than continuing the conversation when we don't, when I haven't seen the space, let me come down there and check it out. So this space is great, it's big. Uh, acoustically, it's nice. Before they were thinking about shooting in here and I'll show you that, but this is the best space. It just requires them moving a lot of equipment. Because what I really want to see is all like that steampunk brewery equipment in the background. Uh, and then this inside room, it's great. It's, it's a great space. Um, it doesn't look like a brewery and it's important for this special that it looks like a brewery, that everything in the background is, is like brewery-like. Because we could shoot it in here. This place is, is a cool a cool room. And quite frankly, it was, it's ideal for a stand-up show, but you don't really see any of the brewing equipment, any of the brewery aspect of it. They were thinking about doing it in front of those um, TVs there. So here's, here's that. Which again, it looks great from like a sports bar perspective or even for a brewery. It's a pretty room, but you're just standing against the wall and you lose all of that depth of the, of the brewery to it. 
Well, they certainly have the space here at the brewery, but they would have to move some mountains to make it work. That being said, the brewery did do this. Uh, the brewery, which is where I shot the less special, which is located around here. They were really excited about it. And I have yet to gauge the excitement level here. They're, they're very cool. I just don't know if it's ultimately going to be determined to be worth it for them to um, to shoot it here. Now here's what I'm looking for. It has to be a big space, but I'm not just looking for space. I want it to be definitively a brewery space. This is a brewery tour and I want this special, like last special, to be clear that it took place in a brewery. The other thing is that they need to have enough space to seat about 200 to 250 people. And it needs to have two shows because it's it's just too much running on there being one show. You could have a bad audience, you could be in a bad groove, meaning me. So you wanna make sure that you shoot the special twice. And to do this, you wanna make sure that both specials look the same. There can't be any light. if Because if light is coming in, it will look different in the first show than it does in the second show. And you can't interchangeably cut those two shows. I will keep looking. We'll see. These guys are gonna talk and they're gonna call me back on Wednesday. In anticipation of that location not working out, I'm going to go and pick up my buddy Hess, who was one of the producers of my Tender Looks special. We're gonna get head over to Angel City Brewing, which is in downtown Los Angeles. Well, I'm, I'm doing my vlog. So you're about to be, here we go. This is not my car, this is Mel's car. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a car. I don't need a car. <laughs> this is really nice compared nice. to the last one. <laughs> no, the last one was nice too. I sold the last one to Steve. Go in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sold it to him? For real? Mm -hmm. for, for a lot? Mm hmm. Ripped him off. Son of a <laughs> shows me. Angel City. Was it my job to call and check? I think it was. Four, four to, to 11. Four to 11 or four to one and? Four to one, either four to way. The, Either way, not open now. I'm gonna take the strike on this. Yeah. Because it's my fault. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Monday, not a good day to check out. We heard some talking inside and so we rang the buzzer to uh, get someone to come out and some, I didn't get her name, did you get her name? I just remember Jessica Jelly. Yeah, and so she's gonna introduce us to Jessica Jelly. And with that name, I'm just, I wanna, I might wanna change my name to Zane Jelly. And, he, and <laughs> Hess Jelly. jelly. <laughs> <laughs> with the jellies, everyone would take your call, 100%. But even in the quick discussion, it was about like, um, fees and contracts and everything like that. Again, it's it's LA, people are used to having production reach out and shoot here, and usually they have money. So even though this will be an Amazon Prime special, this will be on Amazon Prime, it's not Amazon Prime money. They're not paying for it, I'm paying for it. So they're getting somebody right now and then they, we might get a, a walkthrough, but I think regardless, to be very honest, I don't think it's gonna work out because I think the, the word fee was mentioned so many times, I think it's gonna be out of our uh, ballpark. So we got cards, we got business cards, and I'm just feeling like it's not gonna happen. I'll, I'll send them a link. We're gonna get food, where are we gonna get sushi? Yeah. This is Little Tokyo. We're in Little Tokyo, we can get sushi or we can get ramen, or we can get, you know, other Little Tokyo stuff. What's that? Uh, dumplings. Okay, uh, I think that's Chinese. Oh. Um, we're gonna What's the steam balls with the little with the veggies in them? That's uh, that's Chinese. That's dumplings. Okay. The dim sum, dim sum. We'll get sushi and then some, and then some. We got to stop because Hess wants some Yamazaki bread and cakes. They have the steam buns. Can we have a, a steam bun. Which one? They have the chicken, beef, mushroom, sweet, bread sweet bread red bean. bean. So we have a sweet red bean um, one. Let's get a, a chicken curry one. And then let me have um, two of the Chinese. Uh, no, no, not that one. Um, why do you say Chinese? Yeah. Did you say Chinese? I'm, 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 <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> We're in Little Tokyo. We just asked for the Chinese buns. <laughs> Did you say, did you say Chinese? I said cheese? Oh, I not that sounded like. Did you or did you not say Chinese? I said, I think I said Chinese. I meant to say cheese. <laughs> uh, I, think it, I think it's this one. It's either red bean or what? 
or a curry, curry Chinese. Oh yeah, red bean. Oh yeah, that's red bean. That's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Tickets for my thirsty stand-up tour are on sale right now at zanelamprey.com. Go there, check it out. There's a cool map that's all color-coded so you don't have to spend too much time going through the list of cities. If you just find the color of the area that you're in, you can then go and find a show near you. And if you live in the US, unless you live in Hawaii or Alaska, there is very likely a show near you. Speaking of which, I've got to get to Hawaii and Alaska, and maybe I'll make that happen this year. We'll see.